Previously on Cognitive. If we are going to do this, then there are some things we need to go over first. Sorry. It's all because of me. Because I couldn't. This will end the way it began with fire, blood, and tears. This place is lively. I've seen worse, but none as dangerous as this one will be. I'm looking forward to meeting this bastard. If he leads us to Cain. Don't count your chickens yet, Skippy. How have you kept doing this for so long? It's the only thing that still makes sense since Alice left me. Come on, you're not the new kid anymore. You know how it is. Yeah, but the things we see. Listen, Red, I know how you feel. We were all there once. This was one of your first cases, and it's been dragging for three years. But we're gonna catch this son of a bitch. So think about this. It's not about what we see, but about what we could stop others from seeing. And that makes it all a little better. You're right. That's our job. Don't let it go to your head, huh? Reed, are we all set? Awaiting orders, sir. I appreciate the risk you're taking. Stelios and Jetta are both inside now and expecting you, Agent. I've dealt with this guy before. You have to be extremely careful. The minute he sees you flinch, he'll put a bullet through our informant and another one through you. This guy has sold equipment to Kane to build his traps and you have one chance to get an address. Can we go over things one more time? We're short on time. You get three questions. Make them count. Who's Jetta? We already discussed her. She's Stelios' girlfriend, a prostitute junkie who's been our eyes in these circles for a while. The only thing you need to know is that our target trusts her, and that she'll be giving you important information. What's Jetta's code to pass me information? She'll blink once for yes, and twice for no. Be careful. If you overdo it, Stelios will get suspicious. We have only time for one more question, Agent Reed. Where will I get the information about Kane? He keeps a book at the front desk, a register of all his clients. It's not very organized from what I hear, but you might be able to pick up on something. It's your case, after all. How am I supposed to get my hands on it? That's why it's called Undercover, Agent. Convince him to let you take a look at it. We don't have any more time, Reed. You have to go in. Agent McCoy, remember, no interference. You're only there in case things go south. I don't like it one bit. Agent Reed, I will be guiding you as best I can, but Jetta will be giving you information through the code we agreed to. Stelios is paranoid. He'll try to trick you, so be on your guard. And no weapons. He'll sniff you out and kill you before you have a chance to think of using it. 
Your goal is to get the information about Kane and leave as soon as you can. Understood? Yes, sir. And Reed, do me a favor and keep an eye on Jetta. I told her nothing bad would happen to her. I'll do my best. Thank you. Assume positions. Be ready in five. Be careful, Agent Reed. Erica? I'll be careful. When you asked me earlier why I'm still doing this, before you came along, I could have turned a blind eye to the whole thing. It gets harder to swallow every year. But I'm here today because I had to train this damn rookie. <laughs> Turns out training you is the most natural thing about this job, kiddo. Go take care of that lowlife. Reed, we've got our eyes and ears on you. Your business? We went over this one. You must be Stelios, right? I'm here about the gun shipment. Huh, <laughs> the Russian doll. I thought you were blonde. I don't know what you're talking about. They sent me. Now are we getting down to business, or are you gonna keep wasting my time? Not so fast, pretty face. What's the shipment number? Shit, Reed, we don't have that. My client is gonna be really fucking unhappy when I tell him what went down here. You heard me. Shipment number. Jetta can signal you with eye movements. Be discreet, but look in her direction if you need help with any of Stelios's questions. You heard me. Shipment number. It's over there. <laughs> Did Jay send you? Jack Striker goes by Jay, but he might be tricking you. He has a lot of people running his stuff, and he's particularly known for letting one of his thugs give the orders. Jay sent me, yeah. Then you wouldn't mind if I gave him a call. Right, Jetta? Nah, I don't think she'd mind. That could get you in deep shit, Erica. On the other hand, it could distract him. Sure, call him. Hey, Jay, I got your girl here. <laughs> yeah, pretty hot ass. <laughs> hey, hot face, he wants to know, what's your name? 
Her name is Vanessa Madsen, but when she deals for him, she goes by Ariel. It's going to be one of those two. Ariel. Yeah, that's it. We're good, Jay. Pleasure doing business with you. All right, what do you want? I'm here to check the inventory on the shipment. Want to make sure everything's in order and that we don't waste my client's time. Alright, one final question for you. Here's one for you I tell all my clients. You should know this one. Where do I keep my book? My left or my right drawer? Reed, there's nothing here about that one. Where do I keep my book? Neither. It's the center drawer. Yeah, she's got the smarts. Here, doll, look all you want. Done yet? One minute. Take your time. I can't read it. It's all gibberish. I can't read it. I can't read it. I can't read. 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 About time you showed up. I don't like keeping your shit for long. It's starting to stink. I need you to ship it somewhere. I'll pay for it all. I'll pay extra. I don't usually do that shit. But you have a mean wallet. Fine, tell me where. One, two, four, six. You know what's so great about looking at your tits? What? That I can see the fucking wire you're wearing, cop bitch. Jenna, run! I got you, you bitch! 
John, it's now or never. Nobody lies to Stelios. I got you, Reed. Reed? What? You son of a bitch, what? I saw the news. You did those last two pretty bad. My next pair is going to be even better. Who are they? Erica and Scott Reed. I'm taking the boy tonight. Come on, pick up, damn it. Did you find my dad? He's unconscious, but he'll live. I called 911. Stay with him. I have to go. Like hell you are. I'm going with you. He said to come alone. I'm not letting you go there on your own. End of story. And call for backup! Our path was chosen long before now. Now we're just walking it until we get to the final door and the end begins. I haven't been to the family lake house in ages, but I knew Keith would be here. I couldn't do anything to stop him from killing Erica's brother, but I can make sure he doesn't kill again. I just hope I can do this. And if I can't stop him on my own, well, then I don't know what I'm going to do. It might help with something. It's locked. It's locked. Keith's. He must... It's locked. I need the keys. No good.
These old floorboards get very creaky toward the center of the room. He can't know I'm here until I'm ready for him. to be extra careful. Old furniture. Mom liked it that way. These old floorboards get very creaky toward the... No. No turning back now. Locked. So, there's one way to do this. No, I have to go around. It's Keith's hoodie. There's something in it. Aha! The keys to the house. locked. Some thin wire. This might do the trick. At least he won't be able to get away.
Okay, that'll hold. Max loved sitting by the fire for Nothing under here. Nothing under here. Keith's got my visions showed this ending badly. Max, I know you'll hate me for all the things I'm going to do, but I won't let anyone else suffer like we did. Hey, what's this? Hey, what's this? There. Oh, look at this. It must be that drug he uses to knock his victims out. I'll take a peck, or two, or maybe three. These would knock someone out in no time. Okay, that'll hold. Keith, come out of there now! Cool. Cordelia? Surprised? I figured that since I was locked up and you didn't come to visit me, I'd come to visit you. I wanted to, Cordy. I just didn't know what I would say. What you did was... Stupid. I should never have taken the blame for what you did. I felt so broken. I thought I'd protect you. And I wanted to understand... <laughs> Why? Why, Keith? Because I need to. I can't fight it. I, I just need to. That's it? You destroy our lives. 
You force me to kill Max, and that's all you can say? I need to? I could usually suppress or ignore it, but that night in Max's office, when I found out the truth, it changed. Suddenly, I felt cut off from you two, from everyone. There was no reason to suppress it anymore. I want to try to forgive you, Keith. Can you? You have to understand that this is something I can't control, Cordelia. I must kill. I understand the need to kill. It, it stirred in me when I killed Max. Killing doesn't make us monsters. It just makes us human. And because I'm human, I still love you, Cordelia. I always did. People like us, we can still love. Yes, and even though I never felt anything for Max like I have for you, I just couldn't control the need to kill him, to understand what made him tick. I'm sure Max is grateful for what we did, together. Do you think he understood why we did it? Do you still prefer him over me? Keith, I always preferred you. Come here, Keith. Cordy. What are you waiting for? You did it to Max. You can do it again. Pull the trigger. Because if you don't stop me now, I'll kill again. You can't, can you? So much for the drugs. The pain of her past is not over yet. But pain has made her strong, and the past must be uncovered if the future is to become clear. Erica? Cordelia, I've been... I've been looking for you. You've found me now. But this is not... This is not how it's supposed to be. Don't get me the fuck out of here! <laughs> ah! Rose about Bao Tan. He will point the way. The choices are hers. The path is before her. And it will bring us either justice or condemnation. Erica, Erica, my dear, are you okay? Did you find what you were looking for? I saw Cordelia. Everything's gone to shit, Rose. I feel like I should hate Cordelia after all she's done, but I don't. The Sully? Davies? Oh God, John. Is it so wrong if I say that some part of me understands her? Erica, scions have an affinity for empathy. 
Whatever horrors Cadelia has committed, you cannot help but connect to her human side. The woman she was before, the woman she could have been. Who is Baltan, Rose? Did you say Baltan? Oh dear, I haven't heard that name in so very long. Cordelia mentioned it in my vision. I'm not sure I want to talk about this. Please, Rose. I don't know if I can trust her, but this must be important. I have to find her. I have to stop her and her brother. Rose? Sometimes I can remember the particular smell of the jungle. It was musty and salty, and yet I liked it. It was summer of 72 in Vietnam. I had come with the Catholic relief, posted in a remote village, helping those affected by the war. You were in Vietnam? A nun? Why doesn't that surprise me? No, not a nun, a volunteer. It was a hot morning. Vietnamese soldiers patrolled the area just as they would regularly. I was taking a few hours off, sitting in the plaza outside the village temple. I was watching the kids play ball and looking at a figurine a priest from the temple had given to me, all while trying to do some reading. It was so hot that I couldn't concentrate on my book. And that's when I noticed him. Bartin? Yes. There was a wretched man standing under the shadow of a tree, walking back and forth, mumbling nonsense under his breath. In those days, it was not an uncommon thing. War drives people mad, and so I thought he was just another miserable soul still looking for a lost wife or child. Those were desperate days. Sad days, my dear. What happened then? Out of nowhere, the man started screaming like a madman, scaring the children. He would run from one child to the next, raving about fires in the sky. Of course, it was not long before the soldiers took him away and threw him in a cell. People were already scared enough. They didn't need a madman to start stirring nonsense. Was it? Nonsense? I saw the man's eyes as he was being carried away. They made me very uneasy. But they took him away, and the plaza went back to normal. Hours passed. I got lost in my reading, and then a bright light came, and there was a noise, a big broom. The impact threw me against the wall of the church. I awoke under rubble and dust and blood. There was the body of a dead child next to me. She was holding a doll in her hands. And I remembered the man's word. Fire in the skies. What happened to him? Bao Tan was branded a spy. A Viet Cong. No one could have known what happened unless they were privy to that information. In the following nights, I became haunted by visions of him. And I could not stop seeing his eyes. Those tortured eyes. I requested they let me see him. It was not easy, but they allowed me to serve as a spiritual counsel to him. They were going to execute him? Yes, but not before they tortured him in order to extract information. The day I came to his cell, he would not meet my eyes. He lowered his eyes like a scared puppy. It took me days to reach him, but eventually I did. What did he tell you, Rose? He told me that he would feel things, and that this time, he had seen the fire in the sky. I went to see him day after day, trying to grant some measure of peace to a hopeless man. I believe I did some good for him, that I was a friend to him when the whole world had abandoned him. When they executed him, he told me something. It's a shame to say that the exact words escaped me. I remember his eyes, his soul, and to this day I live by our moments together. 